Hey, Scott from Aristocob.com here. And Seth from SethMarkwood.com. Together, the three of us, we are Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. And welcome back once again to our regular weekly episode. Now, we are in the middle of December, which means we're in the middle of our daily tobacco advent countdown, count up to Christmas. Hope you're participating in uh, in that each day. And Doing video responses yeah. and leaving comments below. And we are insanely continuing on with our <laughs> regular weekly episodes yeah. because we started into a project smoking through the six tobaccos from a little tobacconist in Nagold, Germany. Today, the, 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 the tobacconist is uh, Tobacco Ladle, and Nagold is in uh, the... in. Uh, southwestern part of Germany, which is the Black Forest. This is number four? Yeah, number four. Number four. And number four is... I think. Yeah. I, I guess the best way to describe this is a broken flake. It began life as a flake, which has then been broken up. So I think that that is probably the cut we're looking at here. Um, typically flakes can be a little bit tough to get burning. And, um, but boy, once they're burning, yeah, they're fantastic. You just need uh, more fire. <laughs> it's true. Reminds me a little bit of Amphora. Has that, has that cut to it. So what tobacco's in here? I don't know. Again, I, I wish I knew. Maybe I can... It definitely has some Perique. You think? Yeah, I do think. In fact, I think it, that might actually be the majority of this. I see a little bit of black Cavendish. It probably uh, a little bit. I don't know. Burly. I don't know. Is there black? Do you see black Cavendish? Yeah, a couple. Oh plates. yeah, there is a little, a little bit of black Cavendish. Yeah, just a just a smidge. Just like a, a smidge. I mean, like five percent. <laughs> wow. Oh, and look here. Here's also some uh, some cut leaf. This is a blend. Maybe we should have stirred this up a little bit. Cause look look at the other look at the other half. Huh? Much more. Hmm. Nah, it's still it's it's mostly pretty pretty pariki. No, no, not so much the pariki, but the the cut itself. It is pretty much that broken flake. Yeah. Anyway, as a boy was opening this tin, he made note of the fact of how easy it is to open these with this knockoff knife that we bought a couple years ago. We've talked about this so many times, I hate to even talk about it again, but it was a knockoff of a almost $200 utility knife, and there's no way I was going to spend $200 for a utility knife, but we paid five bucks maybe, something like that, something like that. for this. And one end of that is a screwdriver, which is great for prying the tin open. It's got a utility knife blade, so on these they have a they have a tax uh, seal. Solid, just it's just solid. It's got a blade if you need it. We rarely use that. Um, can I'll, opener. I'll, I've never used a can opener. No, or bottle opener. I'll use this to scrape the uh, the sticker and then prying. Like I use my my pocket knife, but doing that, you know, you usually have blade out to get a good pry on it. This is just such a good utility. Um, almost as useful as the lighter bro. Don't buy the lighter bro. Wow. You really can't compare the lighter bro to anything that you find utility in. <laughs> yeah, chance. it's fair. And look at what you're smoking that in. I'm smoking in a country gentleman. What? You're smoking in the pipe of the year from uh, the Corn Cob Nation. Which which pipe of the year 2017. is that? 2017. 2017. Wow. Here in 2018. So um, let's see. We're we're recording this on Saturday prior to an emergency trip for me to get out of town. I am scheduled to be in Orlando this week. I'm doing a class that's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we had planned on getting together sometime before Wednesday to record this. Yeah. Um, I think we'd even talk about maybe Monday. My flight was originally out Monday, but there was uh, the White Death was coming. So by now we know whether or not it has happened, but at this moment, 
no idea whether it's going to be as bad as they're claiming. And right now they're saying that beginning a little after midnight tonight, we're looking at about 12 inches of snow. Plus ice and, on Monday. And I'm teaching. I have to be there. I cannot not be there and have a bunch of folks arriving in Orlando for training. Because you have students coming from all over. They're coming country. from all over. They're, they're not going to have any trouble getting right. there. They're going to be there. Are you the only one from North Carolina? No, there's one other from North Carolina, and, and I don't want to say he's expendable. Mm -hmm. But he could miss the first day of the class right. and be okay because this is a follow-up class to ref and, and day one is kind of a refresher. Yeah. Uh, but I've got to be there and so I changed my flight and I'm flying out today, Saturday at 2 p.m. And uh, It was really expensive for you to do that but, but not as expensive as it would have been for everyone else to have to cancel yeah, yeah, yeah. Would, their would flights. Yeah, it would have been impossible. We right. would have lost money from the hotel because we, right. had, we booked a conference room and so on. Um, yeah, super expensive. I'd, I'd already had a ticket booked. That ticket was unrefundable. <laughs> Thankfully, we, we purchased our tickets through, uh, it's a program, a website that's owned by and managed by American Express, but it's very much like Travelocity. And for all I know, it's just a private branded version mm. of one of those, one of those search engines. And, uh, so they were actually able to give me credit, not full credit. It still cost $200 for a change fee. But then over and above that, I had to pay then for a ticket. Well, everybody who is like me in this area who has to get out of town is wanting to get on this flight. And so even after that, even after the $200 ding, the balance of my ticket applied against the new ticket, we're looking at like $1,300 to get me to Orlando and get this. I fly to LaGuardia from North from Carolina. La, from North Carolina to right. LaGuardia, from LaGuardia to Atlanta, yeah, from Atlanta sense. to Orlando. I leave today at two o'clock, and I arrive at midnight. Hmm. And then you spend two days. Well, okay. Doing I would. Whatever. I was going to arrive sometime Monday because I when I get in town, I have to get some supplies. Mm -hmm. I go to office supply stores and, and and Walmart to get some snacks and things like that. And so I got stuff I can do, and I've got some business things I can accomplish, some projects I'm working on, but I, did, I didn't want to give up my weekend sitting in a hotel room in Orlando. Yeah, but just waiting. That's what's going to happen, or mm. what has already happened. Yes. Uh, I just, um, just uh, late last night got back from a trip to Miami. Um, it is... Doing travel like that is interesting this time of year because it was 89 degrees while I was down there and came back and, you know, have to put your jacket on before you leave the airport because <laughs> I had to take my jacket with me to Miami in preparation of coming back so I could leave the airport and not freeze to get to my car. Um, it's very weird on the body to I do know that. that is weird. By the way, how many tobaccos have we smoked today? Today, this is number eight. Eight for the day. And this has been, we finally hit the uh, the vein of English blends. <laughs> and so I was wise enough, knowing that I'm going straight from my shop to the airport to bring a spare set of clothes. Mm -hmm. We brought some corn chips, even though neither of us are eating carbs. I uh, we, we discovered and learned a couple years ago, Mike Miller pointed out to us, Corn chips help to cleanse the palate and actually get a lot of that smoke breath out. You chew them and then just kind of let it roll around your mouth. Push it around everywhere. Yeah. So, uh, not looking forward to today. I'll be totally fatigued by the time I get in tonight. Uh, but the advantage of smelling like pipe tobacco is uh, I'll smell like pipe tobacco. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> a, like a cologne. I'm not complaining. It just... it. it I, having a sudden change in the plans for the weekend all the family plans we were going to go check out some christmas lights with with boys children tonight and and that's out the yeah. window yeah yeah it's looking like probably all i the flip side i'm kind of happy um because it looks like i'll probably get a day at home with the kids nice uh, on monday uh, assuming things go through and um get to play in the snow and you know, although you do all of those, that preparation in advance, thinking about, okay, do we have 
flashlights? Do we have uh, you know enough blankets? Uh, if if we lose power because they're expecting they're expecting a lot of people to be without power, without internet, without cable, and so um, making sure to be prepared for that. Uh, if it's as bad as some of the storms we have had in the past, especially once the ice hits on Monday, that that gets really really nasty because you can't do anything. You can't drive in that. Um, I, last year, I busted my knee um, really bad on some ice, so black ice on our driveway. And so, uh, you know, I, I will be exceptionally cautious going out into that this year. So. When we first moved here, um, people talked to us about the freezing rain. You know, we said, well, we moved from Ohio, we have plenty of snow. Oh, yeah, but wait till you see the freezing rain. Yeah, right, we'll be good. Then the freezing rain came, and that first time it hit us, uh, it took down a couple trees in our yard, did damage to one of our cars. Uh, I had a coworker who was without power for 10 days. Yeah. Because it's not just that they, they, the ice hangs heavy on the, the branches, which then in turn take down wires and so on, but they often can't get to the places right. that need to be repaired because of the damage that's all around. It's like a tornado yeah. comes through, it's bizarre. And uh, it's definitely nothing to, to trifle with. No, we've got a lot of, um, it's a very high tree area, you know, um, being in North Carolina, a lot of, lots of trees. And so a lot of the back roads are completely un, unserviceable. Inaccessible completely. Yeah, um, because there's a lot of shade, trees are coming down, and so it will take days, sometimes even weeks, depending on, on where it is, for some of those back roads to... Um, to clear up. You'll go down some roads and there'll be a tree has fallen down across the road and they'll come and do a quick cut and maybe it's even an individual with a chainsaw on his truck that does it. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll they'll cut that trunk on both sides of the road, roll the log off to the side and away you go. So it's almost like it's almost like being out west and driving through a redwood tree. Yeah. But, but quite different. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, we were talking about what should we talk about today? And I said, you know, I'm, I'm very curious about whether people are making Christmas gifts or if anybody has planned to purchase or done, done something elaborate for Christmas. Um, and I'd love to hear your comments and see your comments. How about you? Do you have anything big and exciting planned for gift giving this year? There's something I want to make. I don't know that I'm going to have the time or ability to do so. I, I um, my wife has talked about uh, wanting a larger cutting board, and I thought it would be great if I could make her a wooden cutting board. And so I've I've seen some videos of the, the style and design I would like to make. Uh, it's going to be an issue of getting the time available to come to the shop, getting the, the shop and tools accessible, and. Um, probably getting help involved to make sure I'm not doing things uh, the stupid way. Uh, so I'd like to do that. I'm, I'm not sure it's going to pan out. Um, Cutting boards are harder than they should be. Hmm. They really are because um, if you look at what it takes, you, you, you take some boards, you cut them to the sizes that you want, you stack them, you apply some glue, and you clamp them up. And then, boom, you got a cutting board. The problem is when you bring wood from a store into a cold, unheated shop, Right. the wood starts to change its dimension. It has to acclimate to the space a little bit. And if it acclimates too much, when you get done with your glue up um, and bring it back into the house, you get problems with, with, with it wanting to crack. Um, and it may crack along the, the, the way, and it, it, your glue may not cure properly. Yeah. You Typically, I would say to you that for this, I would I would glue it. Buy a cutting board. <laughs> I would glue it up, and I would take it home and maybe, maybe put it in a closet with a, a sheet over it or something so mm -hmm. she doesn't see it, but so that it's in your space. And if you could, you take the wood to the house, stick it underneath the bed for a few days. Right. Longer is always better. Right. I'm talking about the length of time let it acclimate, get it to the shop and cut it as quickly as you can and get it back home and glue it up there. I mean, couldn't you do you that? Can. Couldn't you just take it straight from the store to the shop and do that instead of getting it acclimated you, to the home? You can, but it's going to be different than your home. The humidity level, the temperatures and so on are different 
at your house than they are in a lumber place. Mm -hmm. It's it, it's doable. You got to use the right adhesive. You got to use it properly. Your your wood's got to be clean where you join them together and so on. Like I say, it's more complicated than it really ought to be. Yeah. But you'll also see a lot of homemade cutting boards that are broken. Right. For that reason, because people go, oh, I'm just going to glue some boards together, and make a cutting board, or they'll choose bad wood. You'll see folks right. will build build stuff out of soft, soft wood. Yeah. Uh, and even some hardwoods or soft hardwoods mm. are not appropriate choices like you wouldn't use poplar uh, I wouldn't use soft maple maple's fantastic probably the best the best choice for that okay but um, anyway well that's I, that's I hope that you're able to get that done I'd like to do that um, I'm, I'm not super optimistic that it will happen but the the gift that I know will happen I think um, we do uh, Secret Santa every year, for, yeah, for my wife's family, um, and so all of us are. We've got so much stuff going on that it just became easier to. Um, it became easier to buy a gift for one person, put a lot of thought and time into it, and um, we just do a round robin that way. And so, my brother-in-law sets up a, a random drawing. It's all randomized. And so it just so happened that I was sitting next to my brother-in-law when we got the names of our, our people. And I kind of laughed. Um, I ended up getting my wife's grandmother, um, whom I had last year. Last year I turned a, um, some perfume applicators mm, for right. her. Um, and so I had her again this year. And he laughed because... Um, he has my wife's grandfather. And so this is my brother-in-law. We are the two um, men who have married into the family. Um, so I have a, another brother-in-law who is part of the family. Um, and so I was inspired by what we've done recently on Marco Men's Breakfast Club. If you haven't been watching, a couple episodes ago on day six, um, the sixth episode this, this season, uh, we were talking about Christmas sweaters, ugly Christmas sweaters, and, mm -hmm. and Homer said he'd like to have an uh, ugly Christmas sweater that's not a sweater, that's maybe like a sweatshirt, yeah. with the tobacco advent tree on it. And so um, I made the commitment then that, hey, I'll, I'll make that. We'll, we'll make it, we'll put it up for sale, we'll get some. And so I have done that. So if you haven't seen that, um, check out zazzle.com slash mmbclub. Um, and you can purchase a Tobacco Advent Christmas sweater, t-shirt, or sweatshirt, um, if you'd like. Uh, I also spun off some other things. And so I was inspired by that, making a t-shirt and putting it on Zazzle. I'm going to make my mother-in-law, grandmother-in-law, a t-shirt. Or maybe a, maybe a sweatshirt. A uh, sweatshirt's more likely to be, to be worn. Um, so I'm going to make it, but it's just going to have uh, a cutout of my face, like this. <laughs> and so it'll just be my face all over the front of it. Or, it, I told my brother-in-law, it might be both of our faces on the sweater. And then, okay. then we'll give okay. one for him. I've got an idea. Yeah. This will this, this will combine that idea with also some talent that's already in your family and increase the likelihood that this will get worn. Have you seen how you can take a sweatshirt and make a sweater vest out of it? They take a sweatshirt, and you, you basically cut it down the middle, and then that edge gets rolled over and stitched. And you add buttons. You can add or buttons whatever. or not add buttons. I guess you could add buttons. You would we need but, but want to to make it a vest? You, well, you can. You Otherwise, cut, you, uh, you, you can cut the sleeves off to make it a vest, or right. it becomes a sweater, right? right. You, you slip it on, but made from a sweatshirt. You That's could then smart. have the two faces on there. That's smart. Yeah, so we're thinking, I pitched it to him, since he has the grandfather, I have the grandmother, um, doing both of our faces on both, um, and, and you know, that way they always have their favorite grandsons-in-law um, <laughs> with them, and so then, I always, I always like to do... He needs to have a small um, tobacco ad nah. tree somewhere. <laughs> uh, on the back of it, maybe. I always like to um, do elaborate wrapping. Of presents too, uh, but I I can't. So three of the four years we've now done this, um, I've 
my person has been someone that I can't really goof on with a really tricky and elaborate wrapping. Uh, one year, I I had my sister-in-law put everything in a box. It was in a crate um, that I put a padlock on, and I gave her a set of lock picks and made her pick it open um, herself. I haven't been able to do that. So this year, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, the, the sweater, sweater vest, whatever it ends up being, I think inside of uh, PVC pipe wrapped to the nines and probably duct tape and zip ties and very, very elaborate with a bow on top, um, but then rig it up in such a way that the bow goes inside um, down to the bottom and is just looped. So as soon as you pull the bow, the bottom will drop out. You understand? So so imagine you've got to, uh, top of the pipe, bottom of the pipe, um, a string going down out of the bottom and then coming back up and towards the top. So as soon as you loosen the top, the bottom falls. Yeah, what's the bottom made of? I don't know. It, it wouldn't be a coupling. It would probably be like a plate that's yeah, it can't held be a, tight. It can't be a. It can't be a PVC cap. I know because that would be hold on. Firm. It would hold on. So I probably would do like a like a, a maybe um, like a mason jar lip, so like a okay. mason jar lid. So something that has a, a lip on it that, when held tight with the string, forms a bottom. But when it is pulled loose, will drop out. I know a box that's full of uh, <laughs> of little shreds of paper that would would be I <laughs> stuff down inside of that. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't want to be mean. I want to make it appear like I'm giving her something really difficult, uh, and it's something that I would traditionally give, um, but recognizing that she couldn't open something <laughs> difficult like that. So I want to make it actually easy to open. So, what about you? Well, you I, I, don't, I don't know if you picked up on this, but they probably did. I, I just ate some dark chocolate. Because I've got a nicotine buzz going on, and there's another tip for you. We talked about this when we talked about visiting pipe shows. If you're going to smoke a lot of tobacco, it's always wise to keep some dark chocolate handy. It, it does a decent job of, of kind of easing out that nicotine buzz, which I don't find pleasant. I know some folks do, but just too much strong tobacco uh, this week. Um, no, I don't have anything huge planned this year. and. And it's, it's disappointing because I do like to do that. It's thoughtful and it's fun. It gives me something to do in preparation for the season. But between uh, my mother-in-law's passing and us having to get her house ready for sale and uh, an incredibly busy um, season at work and just so many things going on, it's just been impossible to, to commit to doing anything that's going to take that kind of thought. Now, I still have time. There's, right. There's still a window that uh, the week before next week, I guess, the week before Christmas, um, where I may be able to get something happening. But right now, I can't see it. And so I don't have anything planned. But I'd love to. I'd love to be able to make something that I could, uh, could give to some folks. But to me, I love getting gifts that... that people have put thought into and right. gifts that are made with me in mind um, even if they seemingly are not that special right some people would say you know, wow why, why do you want that um, it's because of the thought that went behind it somebody took the time to think about Scott's wants and needs yeah and I like to do the same so uh, I don't know cool that, and I think that's part of the reason why the question came to mind is I would kind of want to live vicariously since I don't have that going on myself this year. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's <laughs> it's definitely tough, and and you know, for me to do it, um, it kind of has to be strategic, right? And so, like. Like you, I'd love to, to do things like that that are more elaborate and fun for many people on right. my list. Right. Um, Time-wise, it ends up being one or two if, if I can do it. Uh, so you know, I'm, I'm hoping that we can get the uh, 
sweatshirts done soon enough that we can get them from Zazzle. And yeah. Speaking of Zazzle, let's talk about that before we wrap this up. Um, I've been using Zazzle for years. I've earned several thousand dollars on Zazzle from designs that I have on a couple different, they have like little stores you can create. And um, I, I like them a lot. I've had some frustrations with Zazzle and have learned that you have to be super critical when you receive your item. If something about it is not right, let them know immediately and they will make it right. They made a gross of coffee mugs. They remade a gross of coffee right. mugs for me one time because uh, an image was way smaller than it should have been. They said, keep the other mugs. I was able to use them, but they didn't have the impact I'd hoped they were going to have, but I got another gross of them. Um, we gave a, um, a beer stein one year for the International Pipe Month video contest, and the person who received it was, they were being polite, but I could tell they weren't 100% pleased about it. So I, I probed a little bit and found out that, well, it's kind of off-centered and kind of tilted. I said, let me, uh, let's, let's make it right. Because you, you shipped it straight from Zazzle I shipped to it them, straight from Zazzle. So you didn't get to, to do quality right. control. Yeah. So, that said, if you buy this shirt that we're selling, if you buy our right. broken shop clock, if you buy anything of your own from <laughs> Zazzle, be critical of it because they want you to yeah. be happy and they do a great job. The last thing I'll say about Zazzle is sign up for their email list because they send out almost weekly a weekly coupon mm. and on the website near the upper right they will give you the code of the week that you can use to get 20% off of coffee mugs or 10% right. off Different or items. this or that and frequently t-shirts and shirts are 50% off. So, you know, if you don't have to give a gift, then you're wanting to get a t-shirt of your own, maybe a Tobacco Advent t-shirt. Yeah. Wait until you get that coupon code in the mail right? and buy it half off. I don't know if it's still going on, but uh, when we launched the shirts last week, um, they were they still had the 50% off Yeah, I think code. that's ended. And so I, I had that, and then I also used it to buy a uh, Broken Shop Clock watch. Which is something I wouldn't have bought at fifty dollars, but at twenty two, I think it came out to. Um, I was happy to do that. Yeah, I buy so much from Zazzle. I signed up for their version of Prime, which um, forty dollars a year. Forty dollars a year, and I get free two day shipping. The two days is two days after the production of the product, and so when you order, they'll tell you it's going to take us five days to produce this item, and then you're going to get it two days later. Um, it, 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 if you're buying enough items, it just makes sense to use that, especially that I started that when I bought that gross of coffee mugs. But even without that, their shipping is pretty reasonable. They, they have a lesser version of that too. It's $10 a year. Okay. Uh, I signed up for that because to get the watch that I wanted was going to be $7. And then I had already paid the shipping. I already paid $5 shipping for the t-shirt. It's like, if I buy one more thing this year, it's worth it to get the ten dollar. This year is in twenty four or sorry, it's, it's twelve a, months. It's annual, yeah. Yes, yeah, twelve and, months. And so it's it's um you get free standard shipping yeah. by signing up for the ten dollars a year, um, and so it was it was a no brainer. If you're buying two things this year, and remember on Zazzle, if you're not familiar with it, um, you can set up a storefront if you want to sell a design, but if you just want something of your own design if you want a clock or if you want a t-shirt if you want to do a one-off gift you can do that any of their their items can be customized um even the items that that are being sold can be customized to a degree yeah yeah so like if you want the shirt with a different color you can do that meaning the shirt itself could be could be white could i be picked, black, i could picked be white yellow, you picked gray gray yeah yeah so you can customize what the, the size of the mug or, I get I right. get a huge coffee mug. I like their big coffee mugs, but they have yeah. standard size coffee mugs. It's a great um, option if you need a last minute gift, a customized yeah. gift um, for family and friends. And, and there so. and there's ways of making money using Zazzle. So if you come up with an interesting design, um, post it for sale. Yeah. It, it's uh, simple to do. Do us a favor. Go to Zazzle through our link because there is like a referral fee. I think that he would earn that if you buy anything, even if you create something, if you go through his link, 
it doesn't cost you any more, and uh, it, it helps to line the pockets of a, of a hard-working man that uh, is trying to raise three kids. <laughs> but use the coupons, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the best way to go. Um, I, like I said, I've earned over $2,000 with Zazzle, and almost every one of those dollars I have spent on Zazzle. I just mm. use that as a fund to purchase the things that, that I need. That you want. Yeah. But, um, you know, 2000 bucks is nothing to sneeze at. You know, we talked about, you know, uh, the other day about reasons to, uh, to help people earn money or ways to help people earn money. Zazzle is an opportunity. These are called print on demand. There's mm -hmm. other companies like Cafe Press. All of those companies do certain things really well, other things okay. Yeah. Zazzle does, I have found, a great job on, on the majority of things. And like I said, and then they stand behind. I've had one product that I had them make for me that I just asked for a refund. And that was they, they had um, mason jar cups that had a had a handle built into uh -huh. them, and you, you can buy those at stores yeah. and things. And I had them print something on it, and the image that I had was an old photograph of Missouri Mearsham with mm -hmm. your mom and I on it. Mm -hmm. It was from the uh, homegrown Cobb Foolery. And because the image, yeah, that's the picture, because the image was black and white and, and really, really light, that on a clear glass, it, print? it just disappeared. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we could have done this. We could have put a, a, a light color background or a dark color background on it. But after I saw it, eh, yeah. I don't care for this. They gave me a full credit or gave me my money back. I forget which. Great. So there, they stand behind their work. All right, we're going to wrap this up. Um, hope you continue to watch this year's uh, Tobacco Advent. You're participating in that and taking advantage of our video response contest or giveaway. Not a contest. We're doing a drawing. We're going to give away something to uh, folks. Probably something from Zazzle, I'm just saying. Should do that. All right, make it a great week. Make it a great day. We'll see you tomorrow on Tobacco Advent. See ya.